Hey, what's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in. So we're gonna be checking out the How Key Antelope Pro 750 watt electric bike. Before we get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you like the content, hit that thumbs up button, and also ring that notification bell for future notifications of our videos. I can also save you some money on this bike by clicking the link in the description below. All right, so let's go over some of the quick specs, kind of the overview of the bike. This bike weighs 73 pounds. It can handle riders all the way up to 400 pounds. So all you heavier riders out there looking for an e-bike, this may be the one. As far as height goes, if you're a rider anywhere from 5'5", five, five, all the way up to 6'8", they say this bike should accommodate you, but I would check out the dimensions on their website just in case. This is a 48 volt e-bike. It has 25 amp hours total battery, and this is a dual battery e-bike. So you see one battery in the front there, you can hardly see it, and then there is the second battery. So one is just over 12 amp hours, and the other one is just under 12 amp hours. And as for range goes, they do estimate you can get anywhere from 65 to 85 miles, but obviously that's going to be the lowest pedal assist. The top speed that you can reach on this bike is 28 miles per hour and we'll test that out in a bit in our first riding impressions but not too shabby it does have quite a bit of torque from the riding that we did do so we were really impressed and actually uh, pretty surprised of how much power it had it is available on their website for $19.99 and like i said i can save you some money by clicking our link in the description below but let's dig deeper into the bike and show you some of the components that they put on here. And if you have any questions about the components that I'm showing you now, please let us know in the comments below. We'll be more than happy to answer them for you. So on the rear of the bike, we have a 750 watt Bafang motor. They do have mechanical disc brakes. We would have loved to see hydraulic disc brakes on this, but I'm pretty sure it was probably to stay under a certain price point, especially with the dual batteries on this bike. You do have a nice rear rack on the back, and this is pretty high quality. Uh, they kind of push this as a cargo bike, so that does make sense that there is a nice rack on here. We have 20 by four fat inch tires. And if you look at those rims, they're kind of like a rose gold, but it looks pretty sharp. You do have a tail light and working brake light. They also do have metal fenders on here. Uh, we like metal fenders, but they tend to rattle a bit. So they're a bit noisier than plastic ones. And we'll probably see that in the riding videos. So this is actually the first kickstand that we've had on an e-bike like this. Kind of props the bike up. And we kind of like that to work on the bike because it kind of elevates uh, the bike and the wheels. And it keeps the bike totally level instead of leaning over to one side so it's a lot less likely to fall down there are your pedals your typical e-bike pedals nothing special there's your back battery and there is the battery in the front so that kind of blends in with the frame they do have a nice seat on this bike it's very cushy uh, we'll see how it holds up when we're out riding the bike does come with two keys one set for one battery and the other set for the other so you have a shimano seven speed on this bike so you do get the option of physical gears. You do have a decent sized crank set. So I'd imagine it would be somewhat tolerable to pedal. It is a step through. So it's very easy to get on this bike uh, for both men and women. And we're actually loving the matte black color. So especially with the rose gold rims, it's got a really nice color profile. You do have an adjustable front fork. So we'll test those out as well. And here is your front tire and rim and your front metal fender. We had a bit of some trouble getting that straight. It's not as easy as plastic to get it all straightened up. So that's the best we could do for now. You do have your typical standard e-bike light in the front. It's a little bigger than most. You do have a quick release lever on your front wheel to take that off really quickly. And that made it a breeze getting this thing assembled as well out of the box. All right, we're gonna take a look at our handlebars. On the left-hand side, we have our semi-hard grips you have your brake lever you also have your controls here so to turn on the bike you're going to hold the middle button here that has the power icon and your display is going to light up very nice display nice and simple though but it is pretty large they do give you a bell not sure if you're into bells but it's on here they do some nice cable management on this bike uh, we'd love to see this sometimes we get like a rat nest in the front we'll move over to the right hand side there is your shimano shifter along with your half twist throttle and your other half of the grip and your right side brake lever so guys that is an overview of the how key antelope pro 750 watt cargo electric bike 
So as always, we're gonna get on the bike and see how it performs. And again, if you guys have any questions about this bike, please leave them in the comments below. But let's get on this thing and see what it's got. All right, so we're on the Hauke Antelope Pro 750 watt electric bike. We're doing our first ride impressions. to we'll see how this thing performs. Brakes are okay, coming down the hill. A little squeaky. It does have mechanical disc brakes, which would have loved to see hydraulic disc brakes on this, but what are you gonna do? It does have quite a bit of torque. For a bike that they advertise as a cargo bike, as you can see, the display is showing 28.8 miles an hour as their top speed. It feels up there. It feels like it's going pretty quick. So just keep in mind, we did have to unlock it out of the box. The unlock procedure for this bike is to hold the pedal assist up and the pedal assist down button at the same time for around five seconds and let go. And you'll be able to pump up your max speed in display. As far as being comfortable, there's those squeaky brakes again, but as far as being comfortable on the bike, it's not terrible. So like any typical e-bike, you got your controls on the left hand side for your pedal assist. You can go up and down by hitting the up and the down buttons. You do have five levels of pedal assist. The bike does start out in zero pedal assist, which means you cannot use the throttle and you can also not use pedal assist. So basically it's just a regular bike at zero. And then once you pump those up, you can slowly get faster with the level of pedal assist. Now again, I'm, I'm going to point out that I'm very surprised with the power and the torque of this bike. It's, an, it's nice to see, because we've, we've had 750 watt bikes that don't feel like 750 watt bikes. And this one definitely feels more than 750 watts, which is refreshing to see. You use your throttle only, and what we'll do is we'll see uh, the speeds that we can get up to with the throttle only. Sometimes a little bit less than with pedal assist. They do give you a nice display on the bike. It's nice and big. Instead of going up and down, the screen is kind of widescreen, so you can fit a lot more information on the screen, which we like. Yeah, so obviously the torque is gonna be a lot better with the pedal assist. And that's not surprising as we kind of see that on every bike that we test. Almost every bike that we test. We do like the handlebars that they are elevated. So being 6'2", you know, taller rider. It's a nice comfortable riding position. I do wish they put a horn on the bike, especially for $19.99. We don't have rear suspension on here. So only suspension in the front with that front fork. And we're going to go off-road and see how this bike handles a rougher terrain. Right, so here we go. Oh, terrible. But uh, So yeah, so you hear the rattling. That's the one downside to the metal fenders is you get a lot of rattle with them while you're riding. We don't hear them too much. The only rattle we really heard was on that bump back there on the curb. So it's actually been pretty decent. Nothing's been shaking, nothing's been rattling, except when, you know, when we hit that big bump back there. Bumps are decent. We'd definitely like to see rear suspension on this bike. 
as you can definitely feel them a bit more than a bike that has rear suspension. But the fat tires do a, a pretty good job of dampening the load back there. Yeah, there's our squeaky brakes. Yeah, the front is okay with, with suspension, but definitely, uh, you can definitely feel that the rear doesn't have anything back there. Now for just under $2,000, basically $2,000 for this bike, you know, other bikes in its class and price range, you know, they have hydraulic disc brakes instead of mechanical disc brakes. They have rear suspension. So it's a little surprising to see that they, they kind of left that out. I do see that a uh, taller rider would be pretty comfortable, especially you know, taller than me. So I'm 6'2", but I could see someone like 6'5", or 6'6", being able to ride this bike without any problems. I do have the seat pretty low. And it can go up pretty high. Let's do a brake test. Yeah, so see, the only time you hear those metal fenders is when I go over a decent sized bump, which is pretty nice because usually these bikes will rattle and shake and stuff while you're riding. So it's nice to see that that doesn't happen on here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop on 20 miles an hour at that speed bump. Not bad. Not bad at all for uh, mechanical disc brakes. Try it again, see what we get. And I just want to give a shout out to Mr. Central Driver. Uh, he's the one kind of gave me, he's the one that kind of gave me the idea to do the brake test in the video. So I think it's a really good idea to see how well the brakes look. So, uh, 20 miles an hour. Not bad. That wasn't bad at all. So brakes aren't terrible. Not bad at all. But as you can see, when we go over, you can hear that thunder. But other than that, no shakes, no rattles, nothing. I keep mentioning that, but it's because I think this bike is pretty well made. Doesn't feel cheap. It's got a nice, nice frame on it. Definitely feels like it can hold up over time. So if you're looking at this bike as an option, you know, with that nice rack in the back for something to carry a lot of cargo, this bike has a good amount of torque and a good amount of speed for something that's targeted towards carrying cargo. You know, you look at the, what is it, the rad bikes? And those bikes are slow. They're, they're slow, they're not powerful. But the ones that are designed to be cargo bikes and carry a lot of load, well, they don't have a lot of power. So it's nice and refreshing to see the power on this bike. When we had this coming in, we were thinking, you know, it's going to be a cargo bike, and you know, we're not really going to we're not really going to expect too much. From the power department, the performance department, but you're wrong. This thing is uh, this thing is pretty impressive. And as you saw for a top speed, you know, we definitely are close to 20 miles an hour, depending on how accurate that display is. 
But if you guys have any other questions about this e-bike, please leave them in the comments below. And we will get back to you. We'll get back to everybody. And we'll answer all your questions that you have. And if you do decide to purchase this e-bike, please help us out. Click our link in the description below. And it helps us out. It helps us keep making content. Like this. But thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate you. And until next time. Peace out.